Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. Today we're going to look at a structured meshing attribute for the solve command for structured grids. Before we begin, let me just turn off these axes representations, the center of rotation. I'm going to select my domain that we're looking at here. Uh, you can see the domain has a little bit of clustering on both the left and right sides that propagates all the way through the interior. And that actually will help us illustrate this attribute that we're looking at, the interior control functions. So I've gone to the grid menu, pulled down to solve, click over to the attributes tab, and we can see second frame down here, interior control functions. If I click on the down arrow, I've got three choices for this attribute, Thomas Middlecoff, Laplace, and Fixed Grid. And keep in mind that this interior control is applied to the entire interior of this domain, or could be a block at the 3D level. And the results of that smoothing are combined with edge attributes that provide smoothing and orthogonality, and those settings are on the edge attributes tab of the solve but today we're specifically looking at these interior control functions. So the Thomas and Milkoff function is the default for the structured solver. And it is the default because this algorithm tends to preserve and propagate into the interior any clustering that you have on your boundaries as we see here. So with this default selection, if we go back over to the solve tab and put in some number of iterations to run the solver, and run it, you'll see that the interior of the domain changes ever so slightly, but essentially doesn't really change. And that's why Thomas and Middlecoff is the default for this interior control function attribute. Let's go back over to attributes though and change this to Laplace. The Laplace interior control function is going to provide the most absolute smoothing available at the cost of this clustering that we have at the boundaries. And depending on the distribution of your grid and the dimension or number of grid points along the boundaries, that smoothing can be very significant and can really uh, tend to wipe away any of this clustering that we have. So let's look at Laplace for this example case. We'll run it 50 iterations again, and another 50 really doesn't change it much more. And you can see here, it does indeed provide maximum smoothness while eliminating a certain degree of this clustering that we have at the boundary. Not necessarily a problem, but depending on uh, the area of your grid and the nature of the grid in that region uh, that you happen to be working on, uh, may be beneficial or not. If you have a situation where you do have some grid lines that are tending to move towards each other and you're concerned about having uh, cell quality issues, then Laplace may be the choice in that particular case. So let's go ahead and apply this particular result so that it's saved. But let's go back to the attributes, return this to the default of Thomas and Middlecoff, and run it another 50 iterations. And you'll see that method brings us immediately back to having that clustering propagate all the way through the interior of that particular domain. Now let's go ahead and jump out of the solve command. I applied and saved that result from the Laplace interior uh, control. Let's go in and make a little bit of an edit using the tweak command, which is a grid point editor, to the interior of this domain. So I'm going to pick just any point here, and then I'm going to put a nice little kink in the grid at that location. I'll save that. We'll go back into grid and solve. and over on the attributes, let's look at our third option, which is fixed grid. Fixed grid is going to actually maintain the overall topology and distribution of the interior of our domain, while at the same time looking for any local discontinuities, such as this one that I just created. Snapping that out or smoothing that out, but again, maintaining the overall uh, topology as it is. So let's go ahead and run this. 50 iterations, and you can see it almost immediately smooths out that little kink that I had in that topology. Running it another 50 iterations really doesn't do much else to it, so 
it pretty much doing what we intended, which is maintaining that overall topology that resulted from the Laplacian smoothing that we used previously. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line down below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.